Hey everyone, welcome back, Preta here. Uh, so I've been threatening to do this, uh, so I'm going to do uh, kind of a, a review and actually more of a things that I found on my first sculpture that I did. Uh, I sculpted it, you know, molded it, uh, poured it, and then uh, painted it. So I'm going to go through those steps and just the things that I learned from it. Uh, so I hope you like it. Right after this. All right, uh, welcome back. So I wanna go over the process I went through and some of the things that I found uh, and the difficulties I ran into, uh, and hopefully some people can learn from that um, if you're into doing something like this. So, uh, so what I did was I sculpted uh, something to hold all of the heads for my uh, Venom statue. Uh, I think you can see it kind of right back here. Um, so he's got four other heads other than the one that uh, is on him currently. Uh, so I wanted something I can display next to him with all the heads on it. So uh, what I did, I sculpted it in clay. Um, so this is it here. Just kind of a quick overview before I put the heads in. Uh, I'll do that as I go through the process here. Uh, so I sculpted it in clay. Um, and then you can see I've got, uh, I sculpted kind of like the veins or the, the symbiote, you know, the veins that go through it, um, how they're kind of, they stick out some. So I kind of did that throughout, not too many of them. Um, so I sculpted that in there, uh, and that wasn't too bad, uh, you know, sculpting it. It's a fairly simple sculpt. Uh, it's not too horrible to do. Um, so, but I did make a mold of it um, just so I could kind of learn that process. Uh, so essentially, uh, I used a silicone mold. Um, so I sculpted this. I built my frame around it. Uh, I didn't take video, unfortunately, of that stuff. Uh, so I built the frame around it. And then I poured the silicone around this once I, you know, once I did the mold and got it all in there. Uh, so some of the things I learned in that process. So the sculpting was, like I said, just fairly easy, not too bad. Uh, so in the molding process, when you're pouring it, obviously you're trying to get as much air out of it as you can. Um, one thing I did learn is that uh, that's harder than you think. <laughs> uh, so I watched some YouTube videos and. When I was creating the box, I used this plastic, which is probably about an eighth of an inch thick, um, and then I siliconed it. So I siliconed it, and then I poured in the, the silicone mold around the, the sculpture. Well, the pressure from that uh, pushed those, that plastic, those plastic pieces out. So it started to actually come out the seams. Uh, so what I ended up doing was just basically taking um, some tape and putting it around it uh, to hold it in place until it's set. Uh, I'm sure you can use like rubber bands, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, and, and I used hot glue, which unfortunately did not hold that much silicone. Uh, so you definitely want to have something else to support it as well. Uh, so that was the mold process. Uh, not too bad, right? Um, and you can kind of move it around to try to make sure that like in these different areas, the holes where the heads go, um, to make sure you get the, the silicone in there. Um, so that wasn't too bad. So once it set, you know, I let it set, I think probably two days or something. Uh, so I went in and I cut the mold, which is a lot harder because it's pretty thick in certain areas because the base you can see is kind of, and it's, it's still white, I didn't paint the base. Uh, so the base is a lot wider than the rest of it. So the silicone was pretty thick around the top areas here. So I took a razor blade, a fairly long one, uh, and I cut it, and it was, you want to do a zigzag cut like you see in a lot of other videos if you really look at them. Um, so they cut a zigzag design in it uh, to seal it better. Um, so I cut that out, uh, and then I got to pull this out. The problem is I let the clay set probably too long. It was pretty hard. Um, so it was a lot more difficult to get out, right, because the clay is not, it, it was hard, so it couldn't, you know, it wasn't going to smash together so you could pull it out really easily. Um, so, but I did get it out, uh, and the mold, uh, seemed to be fine. Uh, I didn't have any problems with it. So that was kind of the molding process. Uh, so once I got it out, um, I had ordered some resin and, and the resin I ordered, it, it's fairly expensive. It's not too, you know, it's not cheap. It probably cost me about a hundred dollars just for the resin for this, uh, which I'm sure if I shopped around, I probably could have got a better deal. Uh, so yeah, so I got the mold done. So I had that. Uh, and then when I uh, 
after I got the resin, I went ahead and I poured one of the molds, right, into the mold. Um, and that is where I got into a little bit of trouble. So it poured fine, and I thought I did everything right to where, you know, I poured it slow enough, uh, and then to get as many bubbles out of, as I could out of the resin. Unfortunately, that's not good enough. You're going to have to do more than that. Uh, and I did not in this case. Um, so when I was, the, the problem with that is, is when you're sanding it, uh, you end up with some of those bubbles coming to the surface, so you end up with some divots and stuff. So uh, you could keep sanding and sanding and sanding. And I, I was fortunate enough, I was able to sand them out, um, but it was a lot harder. It was a lot more work. Uh, and I know there's a couple different ways to try and like pressurize it and get all the air out of it. Um, I suggest you find some of those videos, uh, or I can do it on the next one so that you guys can see that, that process. Uh, yeah, so getting those bubbles out is key to the amount of work or less work you have to do uh, when you're doing that. So, so that's the, the resin process. So it wasn't too bad other than, you know, I didn't get the bubbles out. Um, so once you get the sculpt out uh, after you've poured it and you let it sit, um, I think I let that sit for another day or two um, before I took it out. Um, and then, and they tell you the thinner parts of the resin uh, take longer to harden. Um, so, and I, it may vary with different types of resin. Uh, so once that was hard enough, uh, then you knew the rest of the sculpt, the thicker pieces were done, um, which is a weird process, but. Uh, so yeah, um, so that was done. I pulled it out uh, and I began the sanding. Like I said, um, it took a while to sand it down uh, to get it fairly smooth or as smooth as I wanted it. Um, uh, so, but once you're done with the sanding and it's smooth enough, uh, you can do your, your painting. Um, obviously, you know, clean it some. Um, and I, what I did was I used a primer and I just used a spray paint primer, uh, a gray. Um, so I put that down first. Um, and once I got, you know, a, a couple coats of that on and sanded those down uh, with like high grain uh, wet sand. Once I got that done, I was able to paint it. So I did a base coat of black, uh, and then I did, and, and this is where, you know, it's my first time, so I've been, I was learning, like, how do I make these colors, different colors, where, how do I get it there to the blue I wanted it, and I wanted a really dark blue. And from what you see here, you can see it mostly looks black, um, but in the right lighting, uh, you can see that that blue, that dark blue tint to it. Um, I thought about adding some, some different things, like on the, like I said, kind of like the the vein looking areas of the symbiote to make them stand out a little bit more so I might still do that. Um, but I, I think it turned out pretty good. And the mixture I got uh, of paint, I, I liked a lot. I had it at a few different colors. So I had some teal colors and whatnot too. Um, but I ended up going back over those because uh, I didn't quite like them. It, it wasn't quite venom for me. So, uh, so yeah, so just some of the things, so that was my first, uh, how I painted it um, after the primer. So the primer was sp a spray can. How I painted it afterward was an airbrush. So I bought like, one of those kits from Amazon, I think, um, that has the little compressor and everything. Uh, and it works fantastic. Um, you've got to make sure you clean the, the airbrush, right, in between the different paints, which was kind of a pain when I'm sitting there trying to find the right color because uh, I didn't feel like I found it, you know, probably till like the fourth or fifth time. Uh, so that's four or five times I'm sitting there cleaning the airbrush out, right? But once you get it uh, and you, you do some test sprays on a paper or cardboard or something um, and you see the distance you want and how the spread you want, uh, it's not too bad. It, it's actually fairly easy. Um, again, this was an easy piece though, right? It's not a very complicated one. There's not a ton of different, you know, uh, colors to it or different textures, right? So, uh, so not a ton of masking either. Uh, so one thing I skipped, so let me go, go back a little bit. So before I did all the painting and everything, uh, after I pulled the sculpt out, uh, and even before I sanded it, I drilled holes in here um, in each one of these so that I could put the magnets in uh, and I just used an, an epoxy um, to stick those maggot, magnets in there, maggots. Uh, <laughs> to stick the magnets in there um, so that they would stay. So let me go back a little bit. So when I was doing the sculpture with the clay, 
uh, I had to make sure the heads fit in each area, right? Um, so what I did essentially was I took the back of the head, put a little saran wrap around it, uh, and then I pushed it into the clay in the area where I wanted them to go. Um, so that's how I got the holes to match, uh, you know, the keys that, that are on the heads. Uh, so once you get that, um, there's a little bit, of, a few other things that I'm going to talk about once I put all the heads in. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, put the heads in, um, and I'll just talk a little bit more about it. So, and the way I did it, and there are different levels here, um, I did it so that the heads, some of the heads, you know, don't have a tongue or anything, they don't hang down as far. So I put those on the lower ones. And they kind of stair step. Uh, at, he's got drool hanging down, so I want them a little bit higher. And that one's got a tongue, so I wanted him higher. And then this one is actually, his hole's a little bit higher, uh, but not much, because uh, he has that giant tongue, obviously. So, uh, so that's it. So that's, uh, you know, it was a, it was a process. Uh, it was a nice uh, first sculpt. Uh, there's definitely things I would do differently. Um, so I may change things up. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to use that mold again. That was more of a learning curve. Um, so there's just certain things like on this one here, you can see I put him in and I sculpted this to where it kind of wrapped around it, which I like a lot. Uh, it gives it more of a, you know, conforming around the head, right? Whereas this one here, like I didn't do that. Um, and you can kind of see just the gap here where it goes in. Uh, so those are things I would have changed uh, during the sculpting process. Uh, same thing with these, it doesn't conform around it as much as I would like. So I, I don't know how I'm gonna display it yet, but it's just gonna be, essentially I'm gonna try to show as many heads as I can um, when I'm displaying it. So yeah, so that's, uh, it's, it was a process, um, definitely, and I probably took more time than I should have on it, um, just because other things got in the way and things changed. Um, but uh, if I sat there and did it, uh, you know, straight without uh, stopping, uh, it probably wouldn't have taken me more than a few days, right, to get this done, um, other than, you know, the curing process and the, the drying, so. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of my experience. Uh, it, it was definitely some, some pitfalls that I hit. Uh, definitely the bubbles kind of caused me a ton more sanding than it should have um, if I would have done it right. Uh, so, and I probably would have not made it solid. This is one solid piece. Um, I probably could have put something in the middle of it to, to give it a gap in there so it's not, you're not using as much resin because uh, it's not needed uh, to have it, you know, one solid piece. It's not heavy at all. Um, obviously, it's not very big. Um, so yeah, so it was it was fun. I'm, I'm going to start working on a, something else, another project that I wanted to do, um, and it's going to be more of a picture type uh, sculpture. So, uh, but again, it'll probably take me a while before you guys see that video. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I learned a ton doing it, um, and maybe this will help you with some of the pitfalls that I ran into. Uh, I, I think if I would have designed it out better. Um, before I started, I probably wouldn't have, I probably would have been able to avoid some of the things like when I was sculpting it. Um, but uh, other than that, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I think it's going to look really good next to Venom. Um, so, and I'm going to start doing some other ones to, to hold some of the other heads too. So, um, with different designs. So, all right. Uh, if you like this, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, you know, that bell so you get notified uh, when I upload new videos. Uh, I've still got uh, a couple other reviews that I need to get uh, uploaded to you guys. Um, but yeah, so uh, thanks for coming again. Um, and, you know, in the comments, please, if you want me to do something, if there's something you'd like to see, let me know. Um, I'm certainly up for it. Uh, so as long as it's not too crazy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone.